In the past few days, Tsiaroji has spoken about Virya Sambojanga, Piti Sambojanga, and Pasadi Sambojanga in a way that was neither too brief nor too elaborate. From both a theoretical and practical standpoint, so that the yogis could understand. But the translator was not satisfied with her translation. And uh, if there is confusion about the things that were said in the translation, then that is not good for the audience. So today, Sayadawji will summarize how Virya Sambhojanga occurs, and from that, how Piti Sambhojanga occurs, and from there, how Pasadi Sambhojanga occurs. In the Buddhist text, uh, it is said, uh, there's the word kusita, which describes uh, action or behavior, behavior which occurs in a disgusting manner, despicable manner. Someone who is kusita is not active or alert, but cold and sluggish. And whether it's uh, working for one's own living, for one's education, anything for oneself, they don't exert the energy to do this. And thus, they are even less likely to do so for others. And as now, in the, in the work that makes one's life better, a, a kusita, a person who is kusita, is not able to dispel thick laziness. And if thick laziness is not dispelled, then a kusala will be what happens, unwholesomeness will happen most of the time and based on that one will make mistakes one will do wrong things and one will not be able to keep oneself clean and so it was said as Sayadoji said in the Pali that one who is lazy uh, one develops um one develops a kusala, not kusala. Because, of one, because one develops laziness, laziness is what lets in all a kusalas. So one is not able to, one, one develops behavior, commits behavior that is blameworthy, not blame, uh, behavior that is blameless. And thus, one is not able to keep oneself pure and clean. One is not able to conduct oneself in a pure and clean manner. So, if in in the world too, this is true, that if one um, does not apply virya, then that whether it's in the area of getting an education or getting a, making a living or in anything that the person does. If the person doesn't uh, exercise effort, the person will be low status. For people who have gained, uh, learned about patience and learned about how to make effort from their parents, such people make effort and they apply effort not just once but time and again and yogis too work in this way so this is called arada virya or uh, this person is um, this type of effort this arada virya is effort that has been doubt developed first of all the initial stage making the beginning effort 
uh, and from there boosting up one's effort to overcome laziness and from there developing effort that goes up stage by stage till it reaches the goal. So this type of effort is called aradavirya and one who possesses it is called aradavirya. This type of effort is also called pegahita virya. This means this word literally means that it is effort that does not stagnate. It, this effort always lifts up until it reaches the max. So finally what occurs is paripona virya or fulfilled effort. And this when this occurs it occurs in a special way and um, makes a huge difference in one's life. So it is said that one who develops this type of effort, uh, aradavirya, uh, dispels unwholesomeness and develops wholesomeness. They dispel the blameless, blame, blameworthy behavior and they develop blameless, pure behavior. And they are able to conduct themselves so that they are um, wholesome and clean. So this matches what the yogis, this matches the life of a yogi, what the yogis do. And this is the essence of virya. This virya, without any control, well, it may happen, but sometimes there will be excessive virya, and then one will miss the object. And without any type of control, then sometimes laziness will come in, and the mind won't reach the object. So to make our effort just right, we, we need to have a jhanic factor. Jhana is to focus on the object when we observe. So this jhanic factors must be present. Jhana is made up of five or six factors. And the first is vitaka, which is the factor of aiming. The second is vichara, which is translated as rubbing against the object and it's also it's also translated in another way but it's really got the nature of rubbing con contacting the object and rubbing it third is pt joyous interest and fourth is sukha peacefulness feeling good happy peacefulness and fifth, upeka, uh, in the higher state, jhanas is re, upeka, or equanimity, replaces piti and sukha. So there are these five jhanic factors. And at the start, there must be vitaka and vichara. It said savitaka, savichara. So these two factors must be there at the start. So this means that when uh, we make the effort to push the mind to the object, we also need to aim. It's a f aiming that makes our focus accurate. And with this quality, we will be able to hit the target and we will be able to hit the bullseye. So when we hit the target, that is called vichara. That is when the mind rubs against the object. And if our aim is accurate and our effort is there and we hit the mind, hits and rubs against the object, then there will be joy. And because of joy, there will be a good feeling, peaceful happiness, and then the mind will become stable. 
So this is just in worldly terms, this is what happens. But when the yogis um, start, starting with the rising and falling, they observe every arising object. They apply effort so that the mind will stick to the object. And they apply aim so that the effort will be just right. And when one gains practice at doing this, then one hits the object directly. One meets up with the object exactly. And then when one observes rising, one's mind falls on a quality such as stiffness, and one knows that quality, that stiffness. If one's mind falls on something like tension, then one knows that tension. If the mind falls on movement, one knows movement. And for other objects, it's the same same way. So when uh, to make one's observation effective is the yogi's job to make this uh, the mind hit against the object exactly, exactly. So, but it just involves doing two things: one has to apply effort and one has to aim the mind. So just those two things are the yogi's job. Later on, what occurs is the mind hits the object exactly, joy arises, and there's happiness. But these come, and stability, but these come automatically. They don't have to be um, we don't do anything deliberately to make those. They, they just follow. So Siyadaji said this before, but so that the translator will understand he's saying it again. So a person who applies the effort to get the mind to the arising object every time has no slackness this disgusting behavior uh, described by Kusita does not arise. Kosaja. Kosaja is this is the behavior that causes one to be called Kusita. So it means um, that when one has this quality of Kosaja then other people, they become cursed by others. Other people swear at them by saying, that person is a real lazy bones. So kosaja is uh, the quality the person, a kusita person has. So this virya effort is very good. And to the extent that one applies virya, there won't be any loba, any greed arising. So at that time, one is free of fault. There will be no hatred, resentment, bearing grudges, these qualities of dosa. Those will not arise. There will be no restlessness, no scattered mind, no remorse. And there will be no wavering, of no wavering or doubt of vichikecha. So when one with when virya has the help of vitaka or aiming, the mind meets exactly with the object, and it rubs it. it um, sorry, it it doesn't go anywhere else. It doesn't lean off towards objects of sense desires. It won't go to... um, So basically, it won't go off of the object because Virya has the help of Vitaka. So it won't go to thoughts of sense desires. It won't also go to thoughts of harming others. And every second that this happens, this... uh, Mecha Vitaka, which uh, could be translated as 
having an erroneous objective directing the mind in the wrong way. Uh, this mecha vitaka is not allowed to happen. Instead, the mind is made to have a straightforward objective. And so when the mind becomes straight, then the mind rubs against the object. It meets with it exactly and rubs against the object. So when we start out by observing the rising and the falling, the first time we observe the rising, the mind doesn't rub against the object. When we observe the falling, the mind doesn't rub against the object. But as long as the mind does not go anywhere else, that's good. In time, the mind begins to rub against the object. One goes past the form of the object, the shape. One goes past the manner, whether it's rising or falling, expanded or collapsed. And the mind then connects with the qualities that are really there. Whether it's stiffness or tension or tightness or movement. So when the yogi, when the mind meets up with these qualities exactly and knows them, then the yogi knows what he or she has observed. So vitaka is what keeps the mind uh, from going elsewhere and its accurate aim. And vichara is what uh, is the quality of rubbing against the object. And these qualities make the mind definite about what it comes to know. So a person who is practicing respectfully and meticulously, um, who cherishes and values the benefit of satipatthana, Every second of the time, such a person is trying to observe what arises. And this is a true yogi, because this person is applying effort, first of all, initial effort, and then from there, boosted up effort, and from there, an effort that increases stage by stage without letting up until one reaches the goal. Panchime nivarane pahine atani samanu pasato describes this yogi. The five nivaranas would, would arise if one didn't observe, but the yogi sees that these nivaranas, which disturb the mind, have been dispelled from his or her being. They see this very well. This is because of the good noting. So when the five nivaranas have been dispelled, the person sees this, and then pamaljang jayati, Joy, joy arises, joyous interest. Pamaza means joy that is weak. It's not, the, it's not the strong form. So one feels things such as goose flesh or like a lightning. Lightning flashes through one, pushing one's body up. And the yogi, when they experience things like this, they feel joy. So this is because vitaka and vichara are present. So when our noting is effective, then joy arises. And because of joy, then happiness, sukha, arises. And at the stage of, at the higher stages, especially at the stage of uddhya the joy that one experiences the piti is strong. The body 
it feels like it's floating up in the air or like it's uh, filled with air like a balloon and there can also be the feeling of joy that spreads throughout every cell in one's body this is strong joy so this joy uh, brings happiness a feeling of comfort and then the mind becomes especially calm so at that time the five factors of vipassana jhana are present yogis who note in this way according to the saying observe note at every arising always guard the mind so yogis who apply effort and aiming to always observe the mind protect the mind with vigilant mindfulness when their noting becomes effective so that the mind meets the object exactly then there's satisfaction with what they're doing and then there will be first there will be first weak joy and then strong joy so that is why it is said panchi me nivarane pahine atani samanupasato pamaljang jayati when the person feels when they see that the five nivaranas have been dispelled in themselves then this a minor type of joy arises and because the mind is free of disturbances the pt becomes strong pamudita sa pt jayati this um the weak joy leads to strong joy especially at the stage of udya bhyanyana people who have good sila Uh, even before knowledge arises can experience this type of strong joy for people who just live in a haphazard way they won't experience this type of joy uh, that the people who have good sila do or what they experience uh, is regret about what they've done this this and that wrong thing PT manasa kayopasambati the body of the person who has a joyous mind becomes tranquil peaceful and cool pasadakayo sukhangwedeti and this tranquil uh, tranquility of body and mind leads to sukha what the person who has a tranquil body experiences comfort or ha- or sukha sukhino chetang samadhiati the mind of one who experiences sukha becomes stable becomes collected so this is how it happens for a yogi who is respectful in the practice and however this is this is the path of practice this is how things develop so examine yourself and compare if this has not occurred in you and then uh, you have to search out the cause it is because of not being free of nivaranas what if this type of joy and and happiness stability has not yet arisen it is because the nivaranas are have not been dispelled one can one can come to that conclusion so when one is happy with one's work and then feels tranquil stability follows sukhi no chitang samadhiati the the mind the mind of the one who is happy becomes stable and when the mind is stable it is said samahito yatabudang pajanati the one whose mind has become stabilized sees things as they are the person who observes time and again one after another who has strong 
momentary concentration, or kanika samadhi, knows things as they are, as they really are. When the mind falls on stiffness, the yogi knows stiffness. When the mind falls on tension, the yogi knows tension. When the mind falls on movement, the yogi knows movement. When the mind falls on on aching, the the yogi knows aching. When the mind falls on pain, the yogi knows pain. And so on. So when there's effort made and accurate aim, and the mind meets exactly with the object and falls collectedly on the object, then one knows things and one, then one knows what is there. So first of all, one comes to know that there is mind and matter. One sees the distinction between rupa and nama. And then one comes to see how these are related as cause and effect. And third, one comes to see how these, which are re- related as cause and effect, arise and then pass away. They're not permanent. They are unsatisfactory and they have no self. They're just process. And especially if one reaches this stage stage where one sees the very fast arising and passing away of phenomenon, then one will see joy. One will feel joy, bhavana rati. That means a delight in this work of developing the mind. If one reaches this stage, then so one just consider how you will feel if you reach this stage. Uh, one will one's mind will become more and more peaceful, and the mind and body will, will feel light and agile. And the noting will go very smoothly. There won't be any hitches involved. Uh, everything will be able, one will be able to note everything easily. One has skill in observation and one's knowledge is quick. And at that point, Uzukata, the very straightforward mind, the honest mind, arises and one is able to admit the things which one has done wrong. So this quality arises and these qualities are called sobhana. Sobhana means they make the stream of one's life beautiful. They decorate one's life. So if these factors arise then one's life becomes beautiful. Meditation practice is to make our life beautiful without using any makeup. Why is it that our life becomes beautiful at this time? It's because all these factors are grouped together at once this time, one has heard fully about the virtues of the Dhamma, but one understands them practically. One understands them and has this trusting faith, O Kapana Sada, this has arisen. And this is what we have developed. This is our own. This is what we possess. This faith can rule. And so if others come to us and say things, uh, uh, saying, for example, meditation is worthless, uh, they, they come and try to shake your faith, one won't accept these things because the faith has become a ruling faculty. And because it is strong, it's become powerful, it doesn't shake in the face of, of what doesn't have faith. 
and this is our own. Virya also has good momentum. It, is, it has become uh, Pagaha Virya, the effort which doesn't stagnate, doesn't drop down, but always increases. And because of the momentum of Virya, then unwholesomeness, Akusala, has no chance to arise. That means that Kusala is occurring one moment after another. And this is how virya becomes a ruling faculty. This is, this is the ruling faculty of virya, viryendriya. And one feels courageous. One is courageous and uh, advances in one's practice. Because one has overcome unco- discomfort, uncomfortable feelings, vedana, one is brave enough to fa- face Vedana and even challenges pain to come and get it. So one is courageous. And following on Virya, the, the ruling faculties of Sati, Samadhi, and Panya become very special. At this time, Virya Sambhojanga leads to Piti Sambhojanga, and then to Pasadi Sambhojanga, and Samadhi Sambhojanga. These occur in a special way. At this time, the noting is continuous, happening one after another. And if one misses the arising object, then even subtle kilesas may enter. So one feels shame and fear that this may happen. One feels, uh, dis- one detests and fears the kilesas coming into the mind. Thus one takes even more care to observe the arising object and one's observation becomes more continuous than before, more and more connected. So, one's observation becomes more and more powerful, and one is better and better able to control oneself. This is truly the science of government. This is how to govern oneself. And when when, when one has shame and fear regarding unwholesomeness, one doesn't want to harm oneself, and thus one refrains from committing misdeeds. Or one has sympathy, one understands how it feels to be harmed, and so one, out of a feeling for other people, one refrains from harming others. Both of these qualities are causes for controlling oneself, and this control of oneself becomes better and better. These qualities of uh, shame and fear and the ability to feel what others feel become better and better. So this is what makes one a true human being with true, um, who is able to keep their mind humane and developing true knowledge. <clears throat> so this is very, very necessary. And now one has established this. And one simply has to work to make these qualities firm. And Sayadawji will continue to speak about how this is done tomorrow. <clears throat>